This video is based on an article originally published on StolenHistory.net, written by member Dreamtime. I've been thinking about a possible timeline of events of the last 500 years. The John Levi video, South of Tartaria, discussing New Zealand, brought the timeline topic back to my awareness, and he also covers the lunatic asylums, which are an important piece of the puzzle. And this is in Seacliff, New Zealand. It was the largest building in the country. Noted for its scale and extravagant architecture, it had a partial collapse, and of course a fire, and just mind-blowing. Again, like the boys' home we just looked at, why must you build an insane asylum in this fashion? Such a proposition alone is insane. And clearly, if they're telling us this was the largest building in the country, of course, it had another purpose, and perhaps this was the capital, and all of the surviving residents of the past civilization may have been thrown into this place and serving more as a prison. And here they're telling us the need for a new asylum in the Dune Eden area was created by the gold rush. I mean, really, the population being so small at this time period, and the need for another mental asylum, as if this wasn't enough. And here we go, the hospital in 1884. Really though, I mean, can any sane person believe that this was a mental hospital? In New Zealand, on the small island, purely ridiculous. And here is a fascinating photo in 1926. A view of the hospital and a cricket match. Just mind-blowing. And, of course, a fire in December of 1942. The more I think about it, the more I am convinced that it is extremely difficult to come up with clear evidence for written history prior to 1700. What I struggle with about our recent past is a good understanding of the possible relationship between multiple reset events, natural cataclysms, or worldwide wars. I want to share the picture that is emerging for me. I get the impression that there are two relevant Earth-spanning reset events that define our current society. A great, almost complete reset around 500 to 600 years ago, and another reset caused by an Earth-spanning post-reset war over the resources and power in the new post-reset world. I suggest that there was a natural cataclysm around 500 to 600 years ago, followed by a time of civil renewal, but also political intrigues and power struggles, especially between 1600 and 1800, which then epically and tragically culminated in a world war sometime around 1800, between two factions, one of which has been omitted from history, probably the one that lost. This earth-spanning conflict wasn't short, but lasted decades, and it only ended around 1900, 
At least when the cleanup period of swallowing the remnants of the old kingdoms, Mughal India, Tokugawa Japan, King China, Free Tartary, etc., is taken into consideration as well. A Possible Timeline Here's a speculative timeline of our recent past. Around 1,000 to 2,000 years ago, a worldwide connected civilization gets destroyed and flooded due to an unknown event, possibly high-tech and highly spiritual. Humans become divided into multiple factions, different languages develop. Before this, no modern oceans existed, and the Earth was, according to the early world maps, three equal parts, with rivers in between and small oceans at both North and South Pole. Africa, Libya, Europa, Asia, all named after prominent leaders from that time. After this event, humans come together to preserve the pre-flood knowledge, try to live in truth and harmony, and the Jesus figure was either a metaphorical symbol for this time or was actually one of the leaders of that movement. Around 1,000 years ago, the first efforts are made to map the new post-flood world with the Mappa Mundus. Julius Caesar lives during that time and creates the first maps by sending out teams of scouts and researchers. Kingdoms and authorities get established, trading flourishes, money is used extensively, the Golden Age of the Middle Ages before the Little Ice Age starts. Around 600 to 800 years ago, another Earth-spanning catastrophe happens. Earth is expanding and the modern oceans are created. The continent of modern America splits off from Asia. Most of the kingdoms suffer greatly. Climate gets worse. The last survivors of the pre-flood civilizations die out, giants, as well as mythical creatures like unicorns and failures from genetic experiments. Between 1400 and 1700, kingdoms and empires recover. Life goes on, even though it's a bit more difficult than before. The four seasons we know today as our normal weather patterns are established. The concept of religion is born because after the 1400 catastrophe, the memories of what the Gnostics and other groups tried to achieve fades away. The independent Gnostic groups fight against the corrupt church institutions in Central Europe and elsewhere. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. They understand that evil creates pyramidal chain of commands that transcend individuals. Writings are shared between those groups, which are rewritten by the Vatican Church during 1600 to 1800 and published as the canonical and censored Bible. The Thirty Years' War in the 17th century is an encrypted and highly distorted memory of that fight. The Jesuit Vatican Church and the secret societies connected to them decide to add 1,000 years to recent history and invent a new calendar, which is to be enforced worldwide. Competing native calendars are destroyed and the accompanying myths alongside. Between 1600 and 1700, another worldwide cataclysm hits with a second Earth-expanding event. Climate gets really bad and evil begins to envelop the Earth. This event destroys most technological knowledge of the past and creates the last survivors of ancient kingdoms, but their power is reduced. The institutional churches and secret societies from Europe use this event to colonize the entire world and rewrite history on every continent. New maps and narratives are being created. The remnants of Tartary and other remaining free empires and monarchies, remnants of the old world governance style, get overrun between 1700 and 1850 due to their military weakness and decentral governance style rooted in the old world tradition. Modern science is established between 1700 and 1850 with the aim to destroy all previous knowledge about cataclysms, spirituality, and cosmology. Another small cataclysm, 
be it natural or a war, happens around 1800 with the year without a summer 1816 as a surviving concept. It doesn't destroy as much structures as the other events before, but it costs many people their lives and gives rise to industrialization. The small group connected to the European churches and secret societies, especially the Jesuits, have secretly kept some of the pre-1800 knowledge and slowly reintroduced some of that knowledge to society. This is known as the industrial age to the uninitiated. The Napoleonic Wars are probably also part of the deception created by academia to rewrite this event. 1900. People all over the world, especially outside Central Europe, still remember some parts of the true history and both fascism and socialism communism are created to destroy all the remaining high culture in the Europe and the eastern parts of the world. The two world wars lead to the destruction of large parts of European, especially German, architecture connected to the old world and also the loss of significant knowledge of the past. Grand Technological and Cultural Reset The Big Last Reset likely happened around 400 to 600 years ago. This is what creates all the ruins archaeologists put 2,000 years into the past, and the late Renaissance paintings of Rome in ruins is after that event. Most buildings from before that time have crumbled to dust. It's hard to say if this event is equal to the event of the Biblical Flood that gave us all the petrified remains of a high-tech civilization. There could have been another Grand Reset event way before 1700. So the last reset probably wasn't responsible for the flood myths we encounter in all religions and myths around the world. This last reset event is when Africa turned into a desert, when South America turned into a forest, and when the Northern Hemisphere turned into a crater-plastered wasteland, likely from electromagnetical plasma discharge related to the sun activity. The map changes, bigger oceans for example, give the impression of a natural cataclysm. World War of 1800 Originally, I thought whatever happened around 1800 was another natural cataclysm, but it starts to look more and more like a world war. This war of sorts is also what causes what is often called the mud flood. It creates all the half-buried buildings, and the destroyed American cities happen at the same time or shortly afterwards. All of the following events are roughly the same event, artificially split up by historians. Destroyed, burned down American cities. American Civil War. New Madrid Earthquake of 1812 Mystery Eruption of 1808 Great Comet of 1811 War of 1812 The Year Without a Summer 1816 Napoleon New Order in Europe Mud Flooded Buildings Both events, the Great Reset 400 to 600 years ago and the World War of 1800, would be tied together because what's most interesting is what happened in between. I think the universal Renaissance-style architecture is evidence that after the last big cataclysm, a unified civilization built the neoclassical architecture and cities all over the world within a very short time period. It was a massive post-catastrophe effort of rebuilding society anew everywhere. And despite the cataclysm ending the classical age, they had so many resources and knowledge left that they were able to build all those buildings. All of the post-reset architecture we see today was built in such a small time frame that we can't comprehend this effort with our current understanding of how buildings can be built. Previously, I have suggested that 
For example, the American War of Independence was probably not a war between the USA and Great Britain, but a war between USA Great Britain on one side and the original inhabitants of North America on the other side. How do you manage to change the history of something like the American War of Independence? Simple. Just like the war between the Western forces and Russian Tartary became the war between Western forces, Napoleon versus Moscow, you simply omit the enemy from the list and draw some arbitrary lines between the Western forces. Note that the true enemy of the Westerners had to be included somehow, similar as the Tartars became mercenaries, the American Tartars became American Indians, conveniently on both sides so historians would not become suspicious when coming across historical evidence for an obvious conflict between natives and Westerners during the war. We are told the American Indians willingly traded in their independence for alcohol and weapons, but what if they only succumbed to alcohol after their entire civilization was destroyed and the only thing that was left were a couple of tents? There is also some evidence that the powers that be did a similar trick with Napoleon in Russia and hid the true enemy. This is roughly what I think happened 200 years ago, not only in the U.S., but on many continents. The real enemy of the World War of 1800 has been omitted from history. They were the original builders of the Renaissance-style architecture, and unfortunately, they lost to the forces of darkness. Lunatic Asylums as Prisons for Those Who Resist It is no coincidence that these places pop up directly after the mud flood and post-reset times of the early 19th century. They were places for those who couldn't cope with the changes or those who resisted the new rulers. In the 18th century, with the breakdown of the ancient regime, or let's rather say the ancient world, the enemies of the new order are being persecuted. It is an open battle that lasts for a couple of decades. New kingdoms and governments form. Free thinkers and knowledge are being destroyed. After maybe two generations, let's say in the beginning of the 19th century, the cabal is in power, but there are still people who won't give in and or can't function in the new world. For those people, they create more formal prisons, which become the mental asylums, where they are mixed with the truly insane, i.e. those who can't function in any way. We can think of those institutions as prisons for both the resistance, as well as places to collect those negatively affected by the past cataclysm. Obviously, they just use the buildings that were already available which explains the glorious and completely inappropriate architecture. Imprisoning the resistance would be a high-priority task, which explains why they allowed those special buildings to be used for this purpose. These buildings look like they could have been healing centers, hospitals in the old world. Observations, Suggestions First, the quick and coherent rebuilding after the Great Reset in the unified worldwide architecture style suggests a connected, highly intelligent, cooperative, and mostly peaceful civil society. Second, in those times, there exist already elements that divide and conquer, but they still don't have the power to overthrow society, the authoritarian Western European states connected to the Vatican, especially Italy, France, and Spain. The evidence we have for what's commonly called the mud flood in the 19th century is surprising, because it means that within a couple hundred years of the last reset, something happened again. But this time, most of the cities were still functional afterwards. So maybe in reality, we are looking at a world war of sorts, or earth-spanning accidents, or both. 
a post-reset world war as a consequence of malfunctioning free energy devices built into all the buildings, thus attracting the mud? Or simply a world war where Europe was the winner? I don't think the building sank. For some reason, the soil came from above without harming the buildings. Possible results of this event. The post-reset war of 1800 birthed our modern society, and many things that define our current way of life can be traced back to the 19th century. The way of life 300 to 500 years ago is so different to ours that if we would put both next to each other, we could almost talk about two different universes. The fact that we do not remember collectively is all that's needed to prove how alienated we are from our own ancestors and that we suffer from collective amnesia. Let's look at some of the ways our world has changed since then. Colonialism Imperialism was created to overthrow the weakened kingdoms and empires. Colonialist power was at its height in the 19th century. Scouts were sent out into the entire world as no one really knew what's going on in the depopulated area after the reset. Then the kingdoms were dismantled and modern democracy installed by the powers that be. The history of colonialism imperialism has been artificially lengthened to hide the importance of the 19th century. Consider the two periods of imperialism in India. We are told the first period lasted from 1740 to 1858 with the economic control via the East India Trading Company. But only in 1858 did the British actually invade India, thus starting the colonialist phase of imperialism. I suggest that the history before 1858 is largely made up to support the myth of the long time frame of colonialism. Empty cities of the American West, as the repopulation took quite a while. Complete destruction of Tartaria and a couple other free empires and kingdoms. Cataclysm in the Northern Hemisphere. Almost complete destruction of the northern areas of the world, suggesting a natural cataclysm or weapon of enormous power. Massive destruction of Roman-style cities in North America to support the concept that North America was only inhabited by primitive natives. Industrialization and robber barons to reintroduce stolen knowledge, full effect of industrialization not felt until the 1840s. Worldwide coordinated effort of running the world fairs to bring the stolen knowledge to the masses first started around 1860. Lunatic asylums to control the dissidents and those in shock first came up around 1800 to 1840. Modern medicine and education as crowd control, mandatory schooling emanating from Europe in the 18th century. Orphan trains and church-run foundling business to repopulate the depopulated areas of the world. Tasking Freemasons to organize the free post-reset masonry. Modern science is being forced on the population. People always rejected the nihilistic science and wanted to reconnect to the spiritual traditions of old, but this was actively prevented and still is. Central banking was created to control the economy on a central level. Clash between communism and fascism in the two world wars to destroy the traditional way of life in Europe and Asia. Inventing the Neoclassicist Architecture Myth Around a hundred years ago, even though we do not have any written evidence for it, there likely was a worldwide effort to redate the architectural remains of the unified culture of the past. Most of the buildings in Europe were simply redated to 1890 to 1910, 
and those dates were often chiseled or painted on the front of the houses. Since it was such a coordinated effort, and all evidence of the existence of this architecture pre-neoclassicism has been purged, it suggests a united secret force behind most nations already at the turn of the 19th to the 20th century. When I lived in Hamburg, Germany, I discovered a building with two dates on its front. It said, donated in 1535, built in 1914. Who needs 400 years to build a house? Most Important Aspects of the History Rewriting Free atmospheric energy disappeared. People started to believe that all the old buildings were only created around 100 years ago, Gilded Age architecture. Colonialism got artificially pushed back into the past. Historians created a wide historical gap between the lunatic asylums and the witch hunts, so that we don't see that the insane asylums directly evolved from the witch hunts, and the church even ran the first asylums in France. Millions of photos and paintings were likely redated. Many historical architects got outright invented out of thin air. Mundane explanations for the mysterious fires in North America and Europe covered up what really happened. Surprisingly, even though it does not feel like that in our daily lives, we are only a couple hundred years away from the old world free energy culture that many unconsciously remember and long for in the alienated world we live in today.